are going to focus on all the highlights of our picture. And what we want to do is we want to look for every one of the little white areas and really focus on the white areas. And any shape that is really white, we want to start putting some um, paint down. Now these, this paint, the layers have to be really, really thin. You're going to be using a, just a tiny bit of paint and almost all of it is going to be medium. So um, we're going to focus on very, very, very thin. That's the key. Do not go thick with this. Stay very thin. And it helps to have this high contrast picture because it helps you really see where the light areas are. And so you can see how much paint I have on here. I have very little paint and I have almost all medium, okay? And I can use my palette knife to mix this together, but just for this, I like to just mix it with my brush. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of paint and mix mostly medium in there. And I'm gonna make a super, super light, thin paint. I mean, super, super light. Now, if you mess up and you get it too, too much paint and not enough medium, all you have to do is take a Kleenex and you can wipe it right off of your canvas. So I'm mixing this here and I've got it super, super thin. Okay, and I just mix it a little bit right in by the medium. So now what I wanna do is I wanna look at my uh, picture and I wanna figure out where it's really light. And you can see I'm barely putting, it looks like almost like just a little bit, I mean, so little paint on there, you could barely tell the paint is there. I mean, it is so small and it's important just to go super slow with this. I can't stress that enough that the people that put too much paint on it too fast generally are not happy with the product. So you want to really focus on looking for the white areas, putting this on, and don't be afraid that if it's like a little bit rough, your, your brush makes the uh, brush strokes rough. You can take your finger right on there and blend it together. Even if it's oil paint, don't worry about that. Um, you can just take your finger and blend it on there and then just you're going to get a little bit of paint on your hands. I mean, you're a painter. That's what we do. So I got a lot of paint right on that and it's too much. So I'm going to just take my finger and just move it around a little bit. Okay, so again, I'm looking for the really, really light areas. And I'm focusing on those shapes. So look for the shapes. What shape do you have that's really, really light? And then if, it, if it's rough, take your finger and blend it together. So if it looks just like a little rough, then just take your finger and, and blend it. Okay, don't be afraid to do that. Sometimes I don't blend mine enough. And I have some students that do a really good job at this and they their stuff looks super smooth. And I'm like, oh, you did a really good job on that. I didn't. And that's why mine looks a little rough. Now for me, it's, it's a little easier because, you know, I have like old person skin. I know you guys don't understand that until you get old, but your skin is not as smooth and it doesn't look as good, you know, it gets blotchy more. But, um, so I, you know, mine a little bit more blotchy is not a big deal, but I think you guys have nice young skin and um, it should look more smooth. So I'm looking for the light areas and I'm just trying to get paint down in the light areas. And you can see it's super faint. It's, you know, it's barely any paint at all. And I'm looking for anywhere that I have a light area, on, you know, on my lips here, I'm trying to get some paint on that because there's a light area there. And again, if I mess up, take a paper towel and just wipe it off. Actually, a Kleenex works best, I think. I think a Kleenex works really good. So um, if um, you mess up a little, not a big deal. Just wipe it off. And you don't know how many times that I've helped students that I've had to just kind of wipe off all the paint they put on because they just, they want to put it on too fast. 
And I understand that you want to start seeing some results, but you also have to remember that we're doing this in very slow layers. And that's what makes this look really good because we're doing it so slowly. That layer upon layer creates the depth that you need. And I, I honestly think that layer upon layer helps you not make the mistakes or be able to fix the mistakes. If you make them, you can fix them because they're very thin layers of paint. So you can see I'm looking for the very lightest areas of my um, picture and I'm putting just a little bit of paint down and really just focusing on the super light areas. Now, if you're working with oil paint, you know, it should be easy to fix this. You could just wipe it off. If you're working with acrylic, your time is, um, you don't have the time that you do with oil paint. With oil paint, you know, you can wipe it off um, hours later, you know, you can wipe it off. I try to do it right away, but you could wipe it off hours later. And, um, with acrylic paint, you kind of have to decide whether to keep it or not. But if you are using acrylic paint, just make sure that you keep it super light. Look how super light this is. It's so transparent that I'm just focusing on the just the really, really lightest areas. If it's a white area, you know, I want to get it um, right now. I want to get paint on it. And so you see how I'm doing that. I'm just really trying to get some paint in the very lightest areas. And that's all I'm really worried about. And I'm looking for shapes. Um, and I'm really focused on that. Like, is it, is this little white area I just paint down the right shape? And it's super, super slow. We'll do this, we'll work on these light areas probably for five, six class periods. And I know some of the kids get really tired of painting really light areas, but it makes a huge difference. It really does. And being patient will pay off. Some kids actually do, when they get done with the light stuff, they don't hardly want to finish their painting because they're so happy with it. And the bad thing about these kind of paintings is um, it always gets worse before it gets better. And, you know, when you start, after you get the white done, you start putting color on, it, um, it goes through a period of, of kind of a rough period where you're just not like, oh no, I messed this up. But you haven't, you know, you just have to keep pushing through. But there's times when I'm like, oh, I, I just, I cannot believe this is not working. <clears throat> so again, I'm looking for shapes of just the light area here. Just looking for shapes. Is this the right shape? Do I have light where I need the light? And I'm doing it very slowly, very, very slowly. So I'm not worried that I don't have all the light done. I'm, I'm working on just the, just the lightest areas right now. I'm putting very little paint on them. Now this is where it's super, super light down here. I'm gonna put a little bit more paint on this because it is so light down there. And again, if it gets a little rough, just take your finger and go back and rub it on there. It won't hurt a bit to do that. And you know, you just have to, you know, clean your hands off a little bit, but I generally have paint on my hands when I'm done painting. That's just the way it is. That's how they tell you're a painter. You got paint on your hands. So again, I'm just trying to focus on the shapes, looking for the shapes keeping it major, major light. 
not worried about anything else yet. There's a lot to do. And if you do it this way, you know, it, it's certainly a, a technique that's different than some painters. If you watch YouTube, you just see some painters just like whip it up. Well, I don't know that I have that skill to just whip it up like they do. But I can do this. I can put layer upon layer of color. You can see as you're doing this why you don't need very much paint you just don't need much paint at all you're mostly using medium on this and remember if you mess up just get a little paper towel like i said kleenex always works best for me i like the kleenex the best You should be looking at your original picture maybe even more than you're looking at your painting i mean i keep an eye on that picture because I'm, I'm trying to look for you know the different shapes and where i should put the white in So you see how subtle this is, it's, it's super subtle. And I know that you can barely see some of this probably online, but that's the way it's supposed to be. If you see too much of it, it's not, not a good thing. This is the reason why I like you guys to print out like a high contrast um, version because I don't I'm not looking at my original picture right now I'm looking at my high contrast one because I'm looking at shapes and it just makes it easier for me to do that Don't be discouraged if it doesn't look, you know, like a Rembrandt or something right now. I mean, it's not supposed to. And if you've never painted a portrait before, don't think that it's just going to magically happen. You know, it takes, it takes some work.
So kind of think of it this way, that as you paint this, um, you're gonna go for the very, very lightest areas, and then you're gonna work your way out. Slowly, you're gonna work your way out to, uh, the next time we come back, we'll go over these light areas again, and then we'll put a little bit of paint on the little bit less light areas, a little more dull areas, but still pretty white. And the next time we'll go over everything we painted again, and we will expand that further and further and further until we just have about a light coat of paint just about on everything, except for the very, very blackest areas. We're gonna have um, a light coat of paint on just about, you know, everything. I mean, it, it might be, some places might be super, super thin, but there will be like a, a light coat of paint just about on everything. but the key here is just to take it super slow. So if you have more paint on there than I have, you're going too slow. Sometimes if you get a paint, too much paint in an area, you could just clean your brush and just take a little medium on your brush and you can kind of go to the edges and blend it out. So just sometimes like a little bit of medium on your brush will help you if you got too much there and you can use that to kind of help take some away. Um, so sometimes I'll do that if I just got too much white on there I'll clean my brush just take a little bit of medium on my brush and then I kind of use it to kind of wipe away you know with the brush what I need and it, it's super accurate because um, you, you know you're using a brush instead of a your finger with a paper towel and so sometimes I'll do that and it works pretty good. So I had a place here, I had a little bit too much white and so I just kind of wiped it away with the medium and I can kind of blend the edges of the white again. And so uh, wiping off your brush occasionally is a good thing. And as you do it more, you'll get the feel for it. And that's why we also go slow. I mean, it's harder to mess up if you're really taking it really slow. Now, if you're using oils, this is going to take some time to dry. So you usually can't go back to it the next day, especially depending on how thick the paint is. Sometimes if you have a really thin layers like we're doing now, you might be able to work on it the next day. Um, but when you start putting some heavier paint on it, it'll take days sometimes to dry. So I would usually suggest that if you're working on an oil painting, that you're working on more than just one painting.
So remember, take it slow, look for the shapes, the white shapes, and try to paint those white shapes. Blend it out with your finger if you have to, or if, if you just want it to be a little bit more smooth look. I don't mind as much because my, my skin's kind of blotchy anyway, so it's okay. But some of the students really blend it out and they do a really good job on that. And it, it does, you know, make for a nice painting. Remember just to keep it super, super light, super, super light. And hopefully you have your high contrast picture printed out. If you don't, I think it's a really good idea or at least get it on your phone or your computer where you can look at it. Maybe you can change the contrast on those too and make it super contrast, high contrast so that you can see just the really light areas. So for at least a while, we'll stick with this high contrast picture. And eventually um, we will discard that and um, go back to um, just a regular picture as we get you know, more paint on it. Okay, so for my right now, I. I feel like if I go too much more, I'll be wiping off more than I'm putting on because I have it so thin. Um, so for mine, I'm probably going to call this a day and I can help the students look at theirs and see what's going on. Okay, that's it for today. I will see you guys next time.